In this video, I'm going to take you through financial statements of a company, Reliance Industries Limited. Having learned about assets, liabilities, incomes and expenses, don't be surprised now to see these items in the balance sheet of a real company. Let's quickly get at it. So all you need to do is to go to a browser, a web browser, type in a name of a company. I typed in RIL Reliance Industries Limited and I went to the website. I clicked on Investors Relation tab and after that I clicked on Financial Reporting. And I could see, uh, you know, after you click on this, you would see list of reports and you could click on annual, latest annual report. You could also look at financials, you know, in brief from any of these. But what I did was I went to the annual report of this company. And in the annual, when I clicked on the annual report, it opens up a new page or it would download an annual report uh, for you, which looks like this. In the annual report, I look at the contents of the report. So, you know, there are different sections. You have a corporate uh, overview, management review, governance, financial statements, which is of interest to us. And then, you know, consolidated and you have uh, shareholder information. Consolidated is actually part of this, but anyways, that apart. So annual report uh, uh, is prepared by all public companies and now you should be aware of what the public companies are. So all public companies at the end of the year prepare the report and publish it on their websites for anybody to view it. We are interested in page number 268 and 269. So if you have downloaded the report uh, as we were as I was you know going through it, uh, you can go to page 268 and start browsing it uh, as well. So in this video, I'm going to look at balance sheet and we'll look at the profit and loss, statement of profit and loss in the next video. There you go. So this is how the balance sheet of a company uh, looks. Now in the financial reports, balance sheet and income statement are the two key reports which the company has to disclose. There is a third one, but you know, that's later in the course. Let's focus on the contents of this balance sheet. Now this balance sheet is based upon the accounting equation. So assets are equal to liabilities. This is what we learned earlier in the videos. And this is a proof of it. I was not joking around. <laughs> the equation holds. Let's look at the real number. It's a real company and the statement is for uh, the year 2019 and you have the statement for 2018 as well. Uh, so there are two, you know, data points for two financial years. Uh, now let's look at the uh, contents in this balance sheet. You have two, you know, uh, parts in this uh, uh, report, in this uh, financial statement. First up, you have assets. Now, who doesn't know what assets are? We just went through it. And then under assets, you have non-current assets. Well, what are non-current assets? You know it. And then you have current assets here. And you very well know what current assets are. Voila. You can read the financial statements of the company and so early in the course. <laughs> However, there are details. And are you familiar with the details? Let's look through it. Do you know what property, plant and equipment are? Yes, you do. That's generic. You know what these things are. Capital work in progress. What is this? This is a fancy term for things which are under construction. You are building assets, constructing assets. So that's easy. Then you have intangible assets. Do you know what intangible assets are? Yes, you do. Patents, trademark. Uh, various softwares which a company is developing. There can be many other things depending upon the nature of the company. But in principle, you know what intangible assets mean. Then you have intangible assets under development. What is this? This is same as physical assets in construction. Things are being developed. So whatever progress has been made, that also counts as an asset. 
Then you have financial assets. What are financial assets? These are you know investments that you've made. A company, Reliance Industries, has invested money uh, in, in a number of different places, and we'll see the details as well. So these are investments. These can be fixed deposit in bank, you know, the very simplest form of investment, or it could be investment by Reliance Industries Limited into other companies or in stock markets or in you know various other national or international investment avenues then you have loans now what do we mean by loans here these are not the loans taken by ril because that will be a liability this loan is given under non current assets this means that reliance industries has given loans to others who are these others these could be other companies or these could be employees of the company as well have you heard of employee loans in the company? There are policies uh, in the companies to give out loans uh, to their employees. So these can be those uh, loans given to other people. And then whatever is left is clubbed under the other non-current assets. Uh, so there you go. You have total uh, non-current uh, assets. So it was not difficult at all. So by now you are very much familiar with what are current assets, what are non-current assets. And it just took you through uh, the list of non-current assets that a real company, Reliance Industrial Limited, has. And it was not difficult. On the right hand side, all you have is two years of figures so that you, know, you could compare. Now, total non-current assets were 493.613 in 2018. And they have you know, grown to become 622818. That's all it means. For comparison purposes, uh, it is required that they show at least two years uh, of data. Let's go to the second subsection, which is current assets. What is in the current assets? Uh, inventories. Inventory is stock of unsold goods. So just a new you know, fancy term, inventory. We could call it inventory. And the, there you go. You know what stock is. You have financial assets now financial assets uh, you also had financial assets in the non current asset category so you know it only means that there are assets uh, there are investments which are long term in nature and there are investments which are short term in nature accordingly you could categorize them into non current assets or current assets so the whole the, there is whole range of financial assets you know that are there you have uh, cash and cash equivalents. This includes bank balance. This includes cash in hand. This includes, you know, readily uh, marketable securities. Uh, these are investments which you can sell in a matter of hours and get cash for it. Uh, loans given to others. Then trade receivable. Trade receivable are the debtors. These are receivables. We discussed this. Your customers who have not paid you for the goods that you have sold to them. So these are the trade receivables and other investments. And then whatever is left is clubbed under this set, other current assets. So total current assets were 123,912 in 2018, and they have grown to become 158,927 in the next year. And total assets have grown from 617,525 to 775,745, and amount is in crores, by the way. So there you go. That's the asset side for you. Now look at the liabilities side. On the liability side, you have something called equity. And I told you in the, in the previous videos, don't be surprised when I tell you that shareholders funds are shown separately under the liabilities. So equity represents the uh, shareholder funds. So equity is shareholder fund, just a fancy name. Uh, you know, this is what is prescribed in the act. So they use these nomenclatures, but all they mean is shareholder fund. So you have share capital and you have, uh, you know, some other details. And we could go to these notes to see uh, in more detail what these items comprise of. And we will do that uh, shortly. Uh, then you have liabilities. You have non-current liabilities and you have current liabilities. Well, do you know these two terms? Absolutely, you should be familiar with these two terms. What are non-current liabilities? You have financial liabilities, the borrowings which you've had you know, from various sources. Uh, there are provisions, which is something that we've not discussed, but as we move along gradually, we will discuss that. 
For now, just understand that it's a part of profit which we keep aside in case you know something comes up and we will have to you know pay for it. So that's a provision. So possible liability, uh, you know, a certain almost certain liability, but the amount will not be sure. That's a provision. Then you have tax liabilities, you know, which are getting ascertained. It takes time for government to tell you what is the actual amount that you have to pay. Sometimes the taxes from previous years are pending, different issues, legal issues going on and so on. So all those things are also mentioned here. In the next section, you have current liabilities. Again, you have financial liabilities, borrowings. And then there are trade payables. These are the vendors, suppliers of this company to whom they have to pay, which includes small enterprises and other enterprises. And then, you know, whatever is left is shown here. So there you go. It was not difficult. It was not technical, especially because uh, you, you know, you saw the previous videos, you know what these terms are and why they are called so. So, uh, so this is a quick overview of the uh, you know balance sheet. Now let's look deeper into it. What are uh, what is really you know in the property, plant, and equipment? So if you have the annual report with you, you could scroll down uh, and go to a note number one. So after you look at the balance sheet in the following pages, you will have various notes which give you details of you know what is uh, included in the property, plant. And equipment and so on. So that's the uh, next step and we'll do, do that in the next video.